Good afternoon. Welcome to this session. My name is Yang Tang. I'm a maintainer of Coding as Project. In today's session, I'm going to do a deep dive on Coding as, discuss about building custom plugins with Coding as in Golang. This is my profile and GitHub handle. By the way, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me on GitHub. I should be available most of the time every day. This is the agenda for today's session. I'm going to spend several minutes to introduce Coding as, discuss about its history and some of the interesting stories behind it. I will post some status update of Coding as for the past year in 2020, discuss about the versions that has been released as well as the new features that has been added. I will also discuss about the Google Sum of Code program with Coding as. The reason Google Sum of Code is important to Coding as is because quite a few features in Coding as has been added through the contributions from Google Sum of Code students. Things like a DNS tab and ACL are plugins that has been part of the default of Core DNS. In last year, the student of Google Sum of Code successfully combined the Core DNS machine learning and the security into a server application. It's fun to take a look. Finally, I will work through a demo plugin in Gola. This is a source-based service discovery. It allows you to set up a core DNS server to reply DNS queries with different response based on the source IP of the query. Finally, it's a Q&A session. If you have any questions, you can read it out. I'll try my best to answer. As many of you know, CoreDNS is a flexible DNS server written in Go. It was developed and started in 2016. At the beginning, it was a really a fork of a CADI HTTP server. Over the years, the relationship between CoreDNS and CADI has been gradually decoupled. Although even as of now, you can still find some old traces of CADI reference in CoreDNS code base. Unlike some other DNS servers, Core DNS has a focus on service discovery. It is plugin based, which means it can be easily extended for new functionalities. If you have a new feature you want to add and it's not available in default plugin, then you can write on your own if you know how to write in Go. Most importantly, Core DNS at the moment is a default DNS server in Kubernetes, which means if you are using Kubernetes, you are probably already using Core DNS. Core DNS support a wide range of DNS servers. It has different protocol support from DNS, DNS over TOS, and DNS over gRPC. By the way, DNS over gRPC is not a true DNS standard. It is a customer implementation by Core DNS. Core DNS also have a wide range of support for different cloud vendors. We have support to allow you to sync up data from AWS Route 3, Microsoft Azure DNS, and Google Cloud DNS. This is a very interesting feature, allows you to consolidate uh, a DNS record from different cloud vendors. This is very useful if you want to do a, a multi-cloud deployment, where you need to consolidate a DNS record from AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. And finally, Core DNS has been started and led by Mick Chipman since 2016. As of 2020, two versions has been released by Core DNS. 1.7.0 was released on June 2020. In this version, a new plugin, DNS64, was added to default. DNS64 used to be an external plugin, but we decided it was important enough to move into the default. We also removed the Federation plugin. Federation plugin was deprecated in 2019, mostly because it's of less usage. Uh, finally, in 1.7, we removed that completely. In 1.7 release, there are some backward incompatible changes. 
mostly related to matrix names. If you're using this feature, you may want to double check and make sure that any update can be handled properly. In 2020, we also released a version of 1.8.0 to 1.8.3. 1.8.0 was released in October. The most important change is that we internalize the caddy. As I mentioned, the core DNS was actually a fork at the beginning of CADI ATP server. Over the years, CADI has been migrated from version one to version two. However, for core DNS, we feel like it's for the best entry to stay with CADI version one. For that reason, we want to internalize CADI source code so that we are not going to be subject to change in CADI's upstream library dependency. The plugin that has been added in 1.8 is a transfer plugin. This allows you to do a zone transfer, which is an important feature in DNS. This is also a feature that has been requested by many users for the past several years. Finally, it was landed on 1.8. We also add another plugin, that's a local plugin, which allows you to do the local query re response. Additional coding as community update. As of now, we have 249 contributors. We certainly want to see this number to grow continuously. So first of all, big thanks to anyone who contributed to coding as, and we welcome any additional contributions. We have 24 maintainers so far. By the way, it's very, e very easy to become a maintainer in Core DNS. If you can contribute a significant pull request, and if you can get a sponsor of one existing maintainer, we will add you as a maintainer. We also have 30 public adopters. Those are the enterprise or institutions that are willing to share name with us and make their name uh, available across the board. Uh, since Core DNS now is the default DNS server for Kubernetes, so the, the usage of Core, core DNS is much larger than 30, but those are the names that have been shared with us and are willing to, to be public. We also have about uh, 7,400 staff. This is a very important number, and we hope this number can be growing continuously. So if you haven't done so, I would really encourage you to start Core DNS on GitHub. This can help the community already. If you're looking for help in Core DNS, there are several places you can find. The GitHub is the most active one. Most of the maintainers are there and willing to, to help you whenever possible. There is also a Slack channel that's part of the CNCF Slack. You can find some help from some of the maintainers. We also have a web page, a blog, and you can also subscribe to Twitter handle CoreDNSIO. You should be able to get most of the uh, news update and the releases update from those resources. For the past five years or so, CoreDNS has been participated in Google Sum of Code continuously. Many features in CoreDNS are actually coming out of this Google Sum of Code program. In 2017, DNS tab was added as part of the CoreDNS default plugins. In 2019, we have ACL plugin that's now wide, being widely used in, in community. In 2020, Chanaya, which is who is a student of uh, Google Sum of Code, he successfully combined machine learning, uh, security, and the core DNS into a server application. The purpose of his server application is to machine learning based DNS threat detection. In his server application, uh, he is going to actually check any DNS queries uh, from machine learning. He combined the uh, TensorFlow uh, to analyze the DNS query, and if the DNS query is malicious, the DNS will be blocked. This is a very interesting server application that can help a lot of areas. 
It's also very interesting to see the topics of DNS can be expanded into other areas of security and machine learning. By the way, in 2021, we are also participating in Google Summer of Code. In this year, the topic of code, uh, Google Summer of Code for Code DNS is ACME support. With ACME support, you should be able to obtain or renew your certificate automatically without any manual intervention. With ACME support, you should be able to just renew your certificate as long as you can identify yourself through the domain name you own. We'll see if this one can be successfully landed as part of the core DNS default plugins. With respect to 2020's Google Summer of Code and the core DNS, uh, the student actually posts a very interesting web page to, to list all his source code for this sub application. He set up uh, several components. The first component is a core DNS server plugs uh, plugin, which is written in Gola. He set up another server, which is a, a Python server exposing a RESTful API. The reason he set up independent server in Python is that in machine learning, most of the implementations are actually done in Python C++. So he decided that it's not the best interest to reinvent the wheel to, to put everything into Gola. So instead, he set up an individual server so that it's easy to reuse the existing infrastructure in machine learning and allow coding us to talk to the uh, machine learning server through the RESTful API. He also set up an Elasticsearch server for data analytics. So that's very impressive. Uh, that's very impressive implementation. He even have a web page of mlbridge.github.io. You can definitely take a look. You can even see his uh, UI, which is pretty impressive as well. I'm going to discuss a little bit of uh, survey discovery with DNS. Over the past several years, many people ask me a question. In this day and age, we have SDN, which allows you to assign IP to any instance you like in any way. Is there still a need for DNS? My answer has also been, I think DNS is really important even in this day and age for several reasons. First, DNS is a nice indirection. And this is an indirection you may like at the beginning because this indirection gives you the maximum flexibility. Secondly, DNS is easy and simple to change. This is especially the case for core DNS because for core DNS, you want to make a change in DNS record. It could be just as simple as one or two lines of code. Another factor I take into consideration is that DNS by itself is actually distributed. It's distributed in nature and it scales to internet because the whole internet is based on DNS. Finally, DNS is very pervasive in IT infrastructure, which means you can find DNS from anywhere in any organization and in any way. For example, you can find DNS in in your IT organization, you can find DNS in your deployment of Kubernetes. You can find the DNS in your cloud vendors native services. This allows you to consolidate uh, service discovery into different way from different angles. Just to give an example of why DNS could be important and why DNS give you flexibility. Let's say you have a service or cluster deployed on let's say AWS. And you want to migrate to Google Cloud or maybe migrate a part of service into Microsoft Azure. So how would you do that? If you don't have a DNS, which is an indirection in place at the beginning, you may need to do a lot of change. You may need to notify your users all the IPs that you have transitioned. But with DNS, all you need to do is to update the DNS record and repoint the the IP behind the DNS record from one cloud vendor to another, and your user may not even notice any difference. 
this is the flexibility we are talking about because the DNS as the indirection give you the flexibility to allow you to come accommodate any future change you like. I think that's one reason why in this day and age, DNS is actually even more important than ever. With respect to survey discovery, I'm going to walk through a demo plugin in Gola in this session. The demo plugin is a simple survey discovery based on source IP. This diagram describes the intention we want to do. We will try to set up core DNS at the edge of the network. The network consists of uh, external networks that's public facing as well as internal networks that's uh, internal facing. We'll assume that the internal network will be within uh, either 172.0.0.0 slash 8 or 122.0.0.0 slash 8. If it's internal, we'll just reply a IP address of 1.1.1.1. On the other hand, if a DNS query is from external, even though they are querying the same names, we are going to return differently. In this demo plugin, we are going to return 8.8.8.8. .8 so this is the basic setup we are trying to achieve. In order to write a demo plugin, we will need to set up several functions. There are three functions that we absolutely need. The first function is a need function, which will perform a one-time initialization. This init function will register a set of function with caddy. People may be wondering about why caddy is still in place. As I explained at the beginning of the session, core DNS is actually a, a fork of caddy at the beginning. So that's why you see caddy uh, appears from time to time in core DNS code base. The second function, which is a setup function, will do all the heavy lifting work of uh, passing the configuration from the file and capture it in a struct and pass it further. The init and setup function are pretty straightforward, but the main processing of the DNS query is a serve DNS function. This function takes the uh, query message uh, as well as the response writer. With this function, you should be able to process the DNS request and return a response, or if you if you decided that your plugin is not going to process this uh, uh, DNS request, you will pass it down the chain, allow the next plugin to process it further. This is the setup function and the init function. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. For init function, you, since we named this plugin as demo, we pass a demo as a string. We also set the DNS uh, uh, as a server type. The setup is a function will will process a configuration. Since in this demo plugin, we are not going to pass any configuration parameters. We'll just uh, do the uh, do the configuration the way uh, like any other func uh, any other plugins. So it's pretty straightforward. You can just copy and paste if you are going to do similar things in your code. The serve DNS is the main body of the plugin. We take the DNS re request, that's the DNS.mst. We will, we will also pass a DNS response writer, which allows you to decide what to do for, the, uh, for, this, uh, for this plugin. The first thing you need to do is to construct a request state. This is done by the first line of state equals request dot request. With this state, you are able to find the name of the query. And you, now you can start decide what to do with the response. In our case, as we discussed, we want to process our, we want to process our, uh, our request based on the, the based on if the IP is internal or external. So we will pass the IP and uh, check to see if the first octet 
is 172 or 122. If it's from 172 or 122, that means the request is from internal interface. If they are from internal, we'll try to reply a, a response of 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. Otherwise, we are going to uh, response with 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And now you can see the address is, uh, is to construct the answers. We'll decide what to do. Uh, we already decide what to do. So we'll pass through the answers and uh, go through the response writer to, to do that. If we decided that we don't want to reply, then all we need to do is to just uh, pass through the plugin chain and allow for and allow the next plugin to pick up and the process further. But in this case, we are going to do that. So we'll return the answers ourselves. There are some uh, time constraints to this session, so I'm not going to go through further. But for this demo plugin, it is available on GitHub. So I'll share the link of this demo plugin uh, source code. You can check on yourself. With the demo plugin in place, you can build the binary, but you also need a core file. Uh, by default, all the plugins are distributed initially. So which means in order to enable demo, you should at least place demo in your core file. We set up the port number of 1053 so that we can listen to this port. If you want to listen to the default port number of 53, you should change the uh, configuration accordingly. The next step is to build a plugin. Building a plugin is fairly simple. So first of all, you need to add the demo colon demo to plugin.config. The next step is to build with Gola. Uh, since sometimes uh, if you're using Linux or using Mac, it may not be exactly straightforward to set up a Gola environment. If you don't want to bother and you already have Docker in, installed, you can actually use Docker to run this one line command to build a binary. If you execute this one line command of Docker, you should be able to see a binary uh, core DNS uh, generated from your local directory. The next step is just run this binary uh, dot slash core DNS and your process is going to up and running, listening to the request. If you try it yourself, you will find out that, that if you do the query from external networks, the return uh, the IP will be 8.8.8.8. And if you, uh, if you query the, uh, if you query example.org from your internal network, then the response will be 1.1.1.1. And that's exactly the survey discovery we talk about. It gives you a lot of flexibility and allow you to decide what to respond at the point in service the way you want. The whole source code of demo plugin is available on GitHub. You should be able to check by yourself. It consists of README as well as all the details. And if you take a further look, you, you can notice that the total line of code is about uh, less than 80 lines. So that gives you uh, enough uh, detail to allow you to write on your own. And finally, uh, we, we want to talk about the contribution of Core DNS. There are several ways if you want to contribute to Core DNS. First of all, you can start Core DNS in GitHub. This can certainly bump the number of stars of Core DNS in GitHub. You can also add the name of your enterprise or institution to adopt a start MD. This also gives you the chance to open a pull request, which automatically allows you to become a contributor. I also mentioned that it's very easy to become a maintainer of Core DNS. In order to become a maintainer, you need to count with one significant pull request. This pull request could be a, a feature or could be a, def could be a plugin as part of the default uh, Core DNS plugin. If you can complete one significant pull request, 
And if you can find the uh, current maintainer as your sponsor, then we'll add you as a maintainer. To be a maintainer of core DNS, give you some additional benefit. It give you a badge in GitHub, which I believe will help you in your career in the future. That's uh, that's all from today's session. So next is going to be the uh, Q and A. If you have any questions, you can raise out. I'll try my best to answer any questions.